How does it feel to build belts interlinked? Interlinked. How does expanding the base make you feel interlinked? Interlinked. Hey guys, my name's Doc Jade, and welcome to episode two of Crastorio. Last time we worked our way up to logistic tech cards, so today we'll do the obvious and start working towards chemical tech cards. We're going to eventually need oil today, so might as well set it up sooner rather than later. Apparently, oil is a limited resource in Crastorio. In the base game, pumps just slow down over time, but nope, after 2.5 million oil, this pump jack will completely stop. I'll put a turret here, just in case. Sulfur is done. Next up is plastics. Our new oil setup is going to live where our old science production used to be. Weirdly enough, you need stone bricks to make oil refineries, so I'll set up stone brick production. Basic oil processing is the same as it is in the base game, so no special shenanigans yet. Also, plastic is done. Next up is red circuits, which take electronic components. That's new. Since we aren't going to do anything with it for a bit, I'll throw all the petroleum in a tank. The tree delusions returned, so I'm setting up a greenhouse to make trees with the excess wood. Red circuits are done. Next up is chemical tech cards. That only takes about a minute to research. We're still trying to work towards air filters, so next up is atmospheric condensation. We're gonna need sulfuric acid eventually, so might as well set it up now. I always forget that you need iron plates for sulfuric acid, so for now I'll be lazy and just grab it directly out of one of these furnaces. For the electronic components, we'll need glass, silicon, and plastic. I've already got glass, so I'll set up silicon next. Silicon is made from quartz, and quartz is made from sand and water in this filtration plant somehow. Whether the filtration plant has inherently magical powers or not, we do not care. What we do care about is the quartz, which we have now gained from the plant's unknown methods. I'll go ahead and bring this quartz up north, and then we can smelt it into silicon. To finish making the electronic components, we're going to need plastic, so it's time to slap together some of that. A single chemical plant will probably be enough for now. I'll run the plastic over by the silicon and glass, and now we can finally make those electronic components. There we go, that wasn't too bad. Now for the hard part. I need to get the plastic and components onto the bus somehow. No worries, I'll just cut straight through the middle of the pre-existing bus. I love playing new mod packs because they bring a bit of chaos back into the game, since I can't plan things in advance anymore. Spaghetti and belt weaving is my specialty, so it wasn't too hard after all. Although the bus is starting to get a bit uncomfortably wide. Time to make red circuits. And holy crap, that is a lot of fluids. Honestly, the whole production chain up to red circuits wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. I was worried there would be some additional steps, like maybe fluids to mimic immersion lithography. With red circuits done, it's time to move the labs to make some room for chemical tech card production. Once again, I am very, very thankful for these extremely long underground pipes. They make moving fluids around so easy. Glass and red circuits in the same tech card sure does feel strange. But now the blue cards are done. I'll combine the four belts into two belts, because combining four belts into five belts wouldn't have made any sense. Time to put the labs back together.
While we wait for atmospheric condensation to finish, I'll do some base maintenance by placing more trees and fixing the iron supply for the sulfuric acid. With the research done, we'll queue up advanced chemistry, and then we can take a look at the new condenser building. Looks like it just makes nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and water. I wonder how I'll use them. I have a feeling I'm going to need these rare metals, but I still haven't seen any on the map. Oh well, that's a problem for later me. For now, I'll set up another smelting array for iron and copper due to low throughput. That'll do. Also, we're starting to run low on glass, so I'll redesign the glass smelting to fit a few more furnaces in there. Advanced chemistry is done. Time to finally research air purification. If you pay close attention here, you will notice a major mistake. The new copper smelter is done. I also accidentally mixed copper plates into the iron plates. After I finished cleaning that mess up, air purification is done. The air purifiers are surprisingly inexpensive, so I'll craft a few of them and put them all in separate chunks. I'll chuck a few filters in them, and we'll check on them in a bit. But first we need to defend ourselves from the world's smallest biter attack. According to the pollution graph, those four air purifiers alone absorb as much pollution as all of our miners produce. I can already tell this is going to be slightly overpowered, which gives me a great idea. Cleaning the used air filters has a 90% chance of returning the filter, which is nice, but the cleaning process also produces dirty water. I currently don't have a use for dirty water, so I'll research flare stacks so I can just burn the fluid. These air filters last a super long time. Armed with the flare stack, we can burn off the dirty water, which will actually occasionally produce stone, but we can worry about that later. Now I'm going to build this huge belt all the way around the base. The plan is to have an air filter in each chunk so the pollution can never escape the base. Also, I forgot cliffs were a thing, so while I build this, we'll start researching cliff explosives. Cliff explosives are done, but I don't need them quite yet, so I won't set them up today. Also, the belt loop is done. Now I'll bring up all the ingredients to make air filters and set up production and cleaning for the air filters. Now I just need to place an air filter in every chunk. This might take a while. Through the magic of editing, you have now time traveled to a future where I've finished building the filters. And the filters are already starting to absorb a ton of pollution. Now that we shouldn't have to worry about pollution-induced biter attacks, I'll start working on advanced oil processing and then ore enrichment. Ore enrichment will allow us to wash the ores with water and sulfuric acid to produce enriched ores, which take half the amount of items per plate to smell. This will effectively double our iron ore output. Oh, and I'll also set it up for copper ore. Now that the iron ore has drained out of the smelters, we can swap in the enriched ore and change the furnace recipes. I'll do the same for copper ore off-camera when it empties. I still don't have a use for dirty water, so time to burn more of it.
Would you look at that? All the pollution is gone. I'm curious as to what lies beyond the horizon, so I'll research radars. I've got a bunch of random stuff in my inventory, so I'll just destroy some of it in this wooden chest real quick. Now, if there's anything I've learned from the American school system, it's that guns kill things. But for some reason, that doesn't seem to apply to this wooden chest. I'll figure out another way to destroy it later. There's still a little bit of pollution hanging out around the oil pumps, but some trees should fix that. Since radars are done, I'll throw one down. Next up on our to-do list is construction robots, so I'll get started on lubricant. Next up is electric engines. And batteries. Looks like I found a use for the dirty water. If I run it through a filtration plant, I can make a small amount of rare metals. It makes stone most of the time, but at least I'll get some rare metals. And batteries are done. Now we can research the robot frames. After some pipe shenanigans, we've got batteries. While I was upgrading the labs, robotics finished. Now we just have to research construction robots, then modular armor for the personal roboport. I forgot you need solar panels for the personal roboport. Whatever. While we wait for that, I'll go ahead and set up lubricant. Now I'll start working on electric engines. There's solar panels. Next up is personal solar panels. Now I can actually research the personal roboport. Portable generator, huh? Sounds cool. I'll research that too. Once I finish running this pipe for lubricant, we've got electric engine production. I made myself some modular armor, and that is a wide battery. I'll make myself a roboport, a small portable generator, and a big solar panel. It's slightly weird to have a combustion engine strapped to your chest for power generation, but at least it's convenient. This big solar panel almost makes as much as that generator does, too. I'll make some construction robots, and then we can finally teach this wooden box a lesson. I'm wondering if there's a way to cheese power production with these gas power stations, because I have an idea. I was thinking I could burn oxygen in the gas power stations for infinite power. This was dumb for two reasons. Oxygen isn't flammable, and gas power stations don't work with anything besides oils. With my lack of basic chemistry education out of the way, let's start working on the prerequisites for utility tech cards. Flammables, and then rocket fuel. The gas power stations make a decent amount of power when hooked up to petroleum gas. I think I'll abuse that a bit to supplement our steam power. Don't worry, I'll use some filters to make it carbon neutral. And rocket fuel is done. That is loud and awful, but still sounds better than any rice Subaru I have ever seen. Next up on the research tree is blue circuits. I'm feeling a bit ludicrous today, so I'll run the filter belt into the middle of the base. Oh, and blue chips are done. Next up is low density structure. I have no idea why I did this, but the more the merrier, I guess. Here I take a slight detour to research fuel for no reason. Looking at the recipes for rocket fuel, it turns out it's possible to make it from iron plates and thin air. I'll throw together some atmospheric condensers and a chemical plant to make ammonia. Fuel is done, back to low density structure. You thought that detour to research fuel was pointless, huh? Well, apparently we actually needed the fuel refinery to make the rocket fuel, so I'm glad I did it. And there you have it, spicy canned air. Production was a bit lacking speed-wise, so I rebuilt it to be more modular. Low density structure is done. Next up is the research server. After massively scaling up the rate we make gases and completely ignoring ratios, we now have three times the rocket fuel production. 
Research server is done. Now we can actually research the utility tech card. Unfortunately, those cards require blue circuits, which take rare metals as an ingredient. And after all this time, the filtration plant only made a nice 69 of the ore. Apparently, rare metals are supposed to be in ore patches on the map, but I do not see any nearby. For now, I'll just set up everything I need to wash the rare metal ore. First up is an electrolysis plant to make the chlorine and hydrogen for hydrogen chloride. And the tech card is done. Add that to the list of things I never thought I would do. Making chlorine out of sand. I have a feeling I'm going to need more of this, so I'll build a second electrolysis plant. Time to actually do something about that filtration plant's output. I'll stick the stone back onto the main stone belt with a priority splitter, and also accidentally mix it into the coal. After cleaning up that mess, it's time to wash that rare metal. Every single time, man, these pipes get me. Like, you would never expect this to reach, but it does. It's so great. And there we go. Enriched rare metal ore. What a mouthful. I also researched level 2 mining drills. I'll put some on the coal patch in a minute. I'll make a tiny smelting setup for the rare metals. And there you have it, rare metals. I use those few rare metals to make these level 2 mining drills. Well, now that we're officially out of the ore, guess it's time to go exploring to find some more. To explore for the ore, we need a car, so I'll research logistics too, and then cars. Now that we've got a car, we can go ahead and slap it down and throw some coal into it and get going. Except you can't use coal, I have to use fuel. I'll temporarily make some fuel from light oil, and then we can get going. Just kidding, I discovered the car has a equipment grid, so it's time to throw some random junk in there. Apparently, these electric engines help with acceleration a bit, so I'll put one of those in. Yes, I know there's only one solar panel in there. This car will be parked most of the time, so it'll have plenty of time to charge. Now let's find some ore! After some driving around, I found a patch next to this biter nest. Now, I'm currently not equipped to take out this base or set up miners, so that'll have to be a project for next time. I'd like to take a moment to thank my supporters on Ko-fi. Their donations support the creation of videos just like these. And that's all for today. My name's Doc Jade. Bye bye